Voters hit the polls yesterday for primaries and primary runoffs in Virginia, in Georgia, and Alabama. And a lot to get to for that, for the results there. We'll bring in Newsmax National Correspondent Logan Raddick. He has the latest there from the Capitol. Good morning, Logan. Good morning, Sean. A lot of results in the primaries, but also a look ahead to the primary next Tuesday in New York. Newsmax hosted the GOP gubernatorial primary debate, and that was a heated debate. It included many testy exchanges, including this one between Andrew Giuliani and Congressman Lee Zeldin. And that's unfortunate. You said as far as your man definition that he is racist in terms of the comments no, no, that no, he you made. No, no, no. You selectively edited the video you said, on no, purpose you because you're worse than CNN. All right. And the truth all right. is, all right. you're just lying all right. to New Yorkers. All right. I didn't we, selectively we, edit it. We have a lot you, more. We have a lot more. We have Mr. I, were I need to agree with C CNN. Very quickly, very quickly. Very quickly. I mean, listen, for, for somebody who, whose claim to fame was that Chris Farley made fun of him on Saturday Night Live for being an obnoxious kid, who ends up becoming more obnoxious when he kicked off the Duke golf team. At, at and least, then you basically get right, position right, as the Chick-fil-A runner you're, at the White House, right outranked now. by the White House you're Easter egg right now. And again, that primary is on Tuesday. It could be a close race for the GOP side. And Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York, she's expected to win the Democratic primary for governor in New York. Now, uh, in Virginia, there were some congressional primaries to speak of, and one including former police officer and Prince William County, Virginia supervisor Yasil Vega. Uh, she won the Republican primary in the state's 7th congressional district on Tuesday, and she's going to match up with Abigail Spanberger, the incumbent congresswoman on the Democrat side, come November. Now, also in Virginia, State Senator Jen Kiggins, she won the GOP primary in the 2nd congressional district and will challenge Democrat Elaine Luria in November, and Luria currently serves on the January 6th committee. But down in Georgia, there was an interesting matchup there. Brian Kemp, the governor of the state, he endorsed Mike Collins, who won his race against uh, Trump back candidate Vernon Jones. So uh, a rare loss for a Trump endorsed candidate there. Sean, Emma, back to you. All right, National Correspondent Logan Raddick with the latest there at the Capitol. Logan, thank you. And we continue our primary coverage with the winner of last night's Virginia Republican primary for Congressional District 2, current Virginia State Senator, former Navy pilot, nurse practitioner Jen Kiggins. Jen, nice to see you this morning. Congratulations on your win. Thanks for waking up with our viewers. Why do you think Thank voters you. chose you to be the Republican candidate? Gosh, a lot of momentum for change here in Virginia. And you mentioned, you know, I'm a Navy helicopter pilot. I'm a mom to four. I'm a nurse practitioner. I've been the state senator and have sat through one party political rule here in the state of Virginia. And Virginians spoke last November, and we were tired of that. We were tired of the radical progressive agenda that we saw the Democrats bring in Virginia. And we showed up at the ballot box last year with our great victories with Glenn Youngkin and Winston Sears and Jace Miaras. And we're going to do the same this year. This year, we're tired of Democratic one-party rule in Washington and D.C. and the disastrous policies that the Biden administration has brought us. So Virginia voters are tuned in. We are motivated. We've got a lot of momentum and the wind's at our back. So we're super excited to be a part of the team to flip the U.S. House this year. And you will continue this campaign as we get closer and closer toward November. I know you're going to face Democratic Congresswoman Elaine Loria in November. How do you plan to appeal to voters perhaps that had not voted Republican in the past, maybe reaching out to those independent voters or even Democratic voters? So there's one thing that all voters in Virginia and I think across America are caring about right now, and that's the economy. Economy, economy, economy. We will talk about it every single day of this campaign. But people care about the prices they're paying at the gas pumps. They care about the prices in grocery stores. People are having to make those tough financial decisions. They feel it in their pocketbooks. And I don't care if you're a Democrat, an independent, or a Republican. We all are paying those same prices. And so we're just going to make that a priority of ours going forward. And and make that just kind of a cornerstone of our campaign. But, uh, you know, I run for Congress to restore American strength, strengthen our economy, but also we're seeing, you know, the border crisis. So I run to restore that, strengthen the border and strengthen our foreign policy. My second congressional district, it's full of veterans uh, and of active duty military. So these veterans are upset. We are embarrassed by what Joe Biden's done to our foreign policy and just America's place on the world stage. So we will be out to vote along with every other Virginian and American out there. And again, we're just going to keep pushing and keep working hard to uh, to take a lot of these seats back and flip the House. You know, the Commonwealth made a lot of headlines this past year when it came to school board meetings and parents getting involved in school board, whether they took issue with the curriculum or the fact that their kids were virtual or they had to wear masks. Either way, we were watching those stories. 
Did that stand out to you? And, and what steps might you take on a national level when it comes to, uh, you know, giving parents really a voice when it comes to their, their kids in the classroom? We saw that especially, you're right, last November with Glenn Youngkin's win and parents wanting that voice in their children's education. That was a cornerstone not only of last November, but it will continue to be a cornerstone of our campaign. Uh, the education issues, the community safety issues, you know, issues that are more uh, on a state and local level. But, but that education piece is so important. We've seen what the pandemic has done to our children, our kids' education. You know, I'm a mom to four who all four of my children are still in some sort of level of education. So for me, it's personal and I see that firsthand. And my friends, my the other moms out there, you know, we're moms on a mission now. So I think a lot of moms are stepping up uh, getting more more involved just politically, uh, we are certainly voting more. So uh, that will continue to be just an issue that I will advocate for, uh, not only on the state level, but the federal level, uh, and get all the other moms and dads and parents uh, and grandparents out there uh, right along with you to make sure our voices are heard in November. All right, and we'll be watching as the campaign does continue on. Jen Kiggins joining us this morning. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank well. you. And make sure you stay tuned to the campaign.